Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss Talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss Talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely. Official Miss Jamaica, what's going on? Nothing, nothing with that wall going. Hey man, so we got us a special guest in here today, man. And she really don't need no introduction. So if all y'all who think y'all didn't know, y'all about to know it now, man. My girl Alexis is in the building. What's going on? Hey y'all. Hey man. So hey you so you do hair? Yes, I do hair here in Atlanta. In in the ATL, shouty. Oh, that's what y'all call it. <laughs> no, I'm just saying what they be doing. I heard them do it. <laughs> so just tell us. So what's the name of your salon? My salon is called Live Beauty Spot, but my name is Hair by Lex three two one. Mm-hmm. And is that your name on Instagram or just that's on all social media or what? Actually, Instagram only Instagram and my TikTok is Hair by Lex one, so you can find me on there too. Wow, you so be cutting up on TikTok? No, I'm just getting used to it. Wow. <laughs> so do you be uh um? So what got you into doing hair? Actually, my dad owned a salon when I was young, so I used to really? spend my Saturdays in there. Was wow. he really good? Was he any good? He actually didn't do any hair. He just ran it. Okay. So <laughs> I just. Grew up there, and basically they were my moms. You know, everybody in there. So I just in in Detroit. Mm-hmm. So you originally from Detroit? I um, actually was in Detroit all the way up till I was eighteen. Oh man! Yeah. So, so you why really move from out Detroit? Here? Why did I move here? Yeah, I came here for school, so I went to Clark Atlanta University in 2015. Graduated in 2019 with my bachelor's in business administration, and I just stayed here. Business administration, but you end up in hair. I know, I love it too. Yeah, they do it all the time. But let me ask you something, man. On a serious note, man, where's Days Low? Days Low just been chilling. You know, she been doing the modeling thing and everywhere. I know y'all see her. Say, man. So, yeah, that's the one of y'all be. Where's Big Sean? Somewhere with Janae, Aiko, whatever her name is. <laughs> Aiko. Aiko. And, and why are they uh, clowning so much on BMF up there in your city? Actually, I think because the people who really from there, they don't think it's the full true story. Like all of it's being told. Like but the thing halfway. says it in the beginning. It, it comes up. This is not based. It's based. What is that? Um... It's partly based on mm-hmm. the full story. So you know it's not the full story. But you know they don't never let anybody live. So they just, that's what it is. They don't think it's all true. And that's what I've heard. I actually, I only watched a couple episodes. And they were saying even the locations wasn't matching up. Like how people, they say they on 12th Street. But really they don't look like 12th Street. So it just, it didn't add up from if you were really from Detroit. Wow. So, um... Why did the the water go bad in Flint? <laughs> and actually, if y'all have seen, we actually just won a lawsuit. Flint just won I a six hundred million dollar lawsuit against the state to get their water fixed. But I don't know why it went bad. But it, we just won after, and it's been like ten years because that happened when I was in high school. Because we was having water bottles brought up to the school to wow. take to Flint. So I wonder and, how long it's going to take to get fixed after right? they won. I don't know. Now they got Snyder out the office. We don't know. And is the real estate still good up there like it yeah, was before? Yeah, it is. That's the only reason I go back. <laughs> like, what kind of interview is he doing? Cold. No, it is. I be coming with it, man. I just no. love, the, I love the culture. I know our people up there are, are doing great in it's real too estate. Cold. And it, it may be cold. It's but too cold. It's really cold, but I'm used to it. But my, real estate is still good. My daddy actually owned about seven houses up there. Six on our block, so yeah. How many straight. do you own? I just own my house here. So, but I, if I do go back to Detroit, which I've been thinking about, I'm getting business, getting in business with my dad. Mm. Yeah, because you need to follow. He's setting. Parents always set that example for their mm-hmm. kids to follow. Sometimes we may not always tell you and school you and tell you what to do, but we hoping that we lead by example and you follow. Yeah, and I kind of am. Alexis, man, you, you, like I said, you see a, see a young black sister, an entrepreneur, one who has scaled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, in the ATL market with her hair 
products you got products yet actually no products you better get well, some products well I do have products I actually own a hairline called Live Luxury Let's Strings talk about it so we got closures frontals and the best hair in the game everybody you- says that no and that's what I'm about to say I know everybody <laughs> say that but I got proof what's wow, the proof what's the proof the clients hey <laughs> cash moves everything around me cream get the money how many clients you have how many do I have? I can't even keep count. Right, yeah, like, like so you stay, you stay booked all I the stay time. I stay booked and busy to the point where my friends be on my behind because they like, Lex, I can't get an appointment. I can't get an appointment. You got to book early. So what do you wow. do? You do everything. Do you do um, braids, lace fronts, um, perms, braids? I mean, everything? No, I do majority everything. I don't do Natural braids. Hair. Don't do braids. I do do natural hair. Okay. I do do coloring, perms, etc. Everything. I don't do braids, but I have somebody in the shop who do braids named The Hair Factory with two E's on V, and she does great braids. Do you do white folks' hair? Actually, I've done about four people, four white people here. Oh, okay. But it was for weddings. For weddings. Yeah, so they were in people weddings. They didn't come and book with me, so. But you, yeah. you, you see, added that to your portfolio and put it up so they know that, well, I can go to her. Because yeah. I have a lot of friends who, this I could never understand this with that culture with hair. They'll go over here to get a haircut, and they'll come over here for a color. They'll never do everything at one place. Right. Because the person who does the color over here don't cut good. Mm-hmm. So they go multiple places for different things. Right. We want to just go one person for everything. And we're not going to jump around. Like the back in the day. Yeah, I get you. Because nowadays, I think the stylist and hairstylist, we kind of pick something and, tr- and kind of like master that thing instead of trying to master everything. Mm-hmm. You know, so at first... I started off doing ponytails. I got, I'm from Detroit, so I did a lot of slick styles. That's what so, I was in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so a lot of slick styles. But now, I don't even barely do ponytails now. I, I'm, I'm more in the lace because that's what the women Everything. like here. Like the lace, the braids, and not the braids. Like, I'm not doing the braids, but they're doing the braids. Lace front, how do they don't break out their edges? Because everybody's always scared about breaking out their edges with lace fronts. So it kind of depends on the knowledge the stylists have. Because when you do a lace front, the lace is supposed to go in front of the hairline. But what happened to a person that don't have a lot of space after the... Then See? they look like their hair is like right here and their eyebrows are there and then that don't look right. Right. So you got to know what works for you and don't work for you. Because... <laughs> You have to tell, like me, I can't wear, you see how far my baby mm-hmm. hair is there at my eyebrows, so right. I can't really wear frontals. I don't really wear frontals. I kind of get into the closures, but when it's a closure, it's literally just right here. So it, it can be as far like you need it, but you don't need all the extra baby hair. So but so you do need to know what works for you and don't work for you because everybody can't get everything. And you're totally honest with your clients. I'm you tell them honest. all of this because, you know, some people don't care about their hair, keeping it healthy. They just want to put something on there to look cute. Right. I'm very honest and blunt if you ask any of my clients. But you still give them what they want. No. Oh, so really? So I'm like, I can't do that. Really? That come out of my mouth a lot. I can't do that. You don't have that type of hair. You know, like, or not, you don't have that type of hair. So they can show me something and like tell me to do that. But if I know in my head that it's not going to turn out like that or it's not going to look like that when I get done, I'm going to tell you I can't do that because I don't want you yelling at me when you get done. I don't want us arguing, going back and forth. I'd rather just deny your service and send you somewhere why somebody can do it or they're willing to do it. Have you ever had that experience? Yes, I have had that experience. Actually, somebody came in my salon today. I have to send her a text message when we come out of here and tell her that I'm not able to do her styling. What's the worst experience you've ever had dealing with a client? The worst. Um, like you almost went to jail because of it. I actually hasn't. I haven't had any bad clients like that. But I used to work at my house okay. when I was in college. So it was someone who made. I used to take appointments early at six a.m. Mm-hmm. So it was someone who made a six a.m. appointment did not show. So she was she was blocked from my site. So the she her mother made an appointment the next day with the same last name. Like I wasn't gonna notice. So it's. And usually when I was working at my house, you would get a text message from me the day before confirming your appointment, send you the address. I never sent a text message because I knew 
who it was, mm-hmm. but they still popped up at my house. And that's when we had to get into it. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's when we had to get, that's when I started working in the house too after that. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Of yeah. That. But that was before COVID. What year was that? Well, I'm lying. I, I came out the house in twenty nineteen, so never mind. Okay. I'm lying. So, okay. Yeah. So you've been in a salon ever since. Yeah, I've been in the salon since I graduated college May twenty nineteen and that's when I said I'm I'm not working in my house no more. What are the benefits of being in a salon rather than being because I know both of them have pros and cons. Tell me some of that. So the pros and cons of working at home, um, you get up, you there. All you really gotta do is wash your face, get in the shower, you don't gotta go nowhere, so you can come right downstairs. So that's why I was able to take clients early at six AM. I can get up at five forty five, jump in the shower, wash my hair, wash my face, everything, come right downstairs. Um another pro is is relaxing to clients that you've had over time so they feel a little more relaxed. They feel a little more comfortable. Um, cons. Did you take new clients at, at your house? Yeah, so also cons. Some new clients, like, I don't feel comfortable coming to your house. Uh, that is, that is that. But when I moved out of the house, my clientele grew because probably I was out of the house. Mm. So my clientele grew. Um, I, I also thought I was becoming weird before COVID because I was working so much, so I would never leave the house. I would wake up, go to work, never leave. I mean, I would get food delivered and I'd just be there. I don't have to go nowhere afterwards. Also, I just wanted to, I think it's important to separate home from business. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to just go leave out of the room and go lay on my couch and watch TV. I want to come home, straighten stuff up, get everything. And I mean, just in case if you do, if you smoke or anything, you got to do stuff beforehand. Mm-hmm. You can't do it while, you know, it's just different. I just, it was too much. It became too much. So um, you would say your specialty right now and everything that you do is closures? I think my specialty right now is slick backs, sew-ins, closures, weaves right now. Just weaves. Weaves. Okay. Well, I've been sitting. I've heard it. I've heard enough. Mm-hmm. I don't really know much about the hair stuff like y'all but i've been listening and what i don't like is when these girls have this quick weave thing and i don't know it looks fake right there he always had that oh, the, lace. Clothes, the lace front the he lace hates front. lace front. i got somebody over there right now if i brung her you wouldn't even be able to tell the Bro, difference i'm so sick of that part well bring right her there. so he can see that oh, i know that, that, that yeah. part right there that i'm part. about to bring her to you that when part we get right there, there. Cause it you can't always tell. Lift. It's right there. it always be lifting it's right or there. just I'm look. so sick of it. So one thing about lace, it's not a cheap hairstyle. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of maintenance. So you okay. gotta let people know that. Cause after three, four, I wouldn't say three or four days. I would say a closure could last you about a week and a half ish. Not That's doing it. week and a half ish without it first lifting. Mm-hmm. You can keep it probably like two weeks, but you have to probably put some stuff on there, lay it down so it'll be straight. A frontal, you know, that's ear to ear, so it just take a lot. If you do a lot with your daily, I just don't suggest it unless you got some money because it take it take a stylist a lot to get a frontal looking as natural as you want it to. So we have to charge. I don't charge as much as everybody else charge, but I charge. But you have to, to get it maintenance, you got to at least charge half of what you charged the first time. Okay, well, can you do natural hair and make mm-hmm. it look good and give it body and, and, and try to help our people to have a nice grade of hair fixed yeah. up, fluffed up, you know, do it. I ain't saying permanent, but just taking and care, managing the mm-hmm. hair. What's up with that? Ain't nothing up with the that. The hell's up with that? Why and can't I can't teach them how to do it Yeah, themselves. why can't I teach them how to, how to maintain their hair? Their hair is beautiful, too. I think a lot of times people have gotten so <laughs> caught up in trying to be like everybody else. I'm sick of it. Why no. don't these people stop following each other and start standing up for who they really are? We love your hair no matter what. If it's kinky, wear it kinky. If it's not it, wear it not it. If it's straight, wear it straight. If it's, you, you understand what I'm saying? We got to start loving ourselves more. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, that's a whole different conversation because it's the internet world right now, and it's the men too. So, like, I know some men I've I've met here. They don't like people with natural hair. Like, it, even when I was in college, I had a lot of male friends. They don't like people with the puff balls. So I went to HBCU. I went to Clark. So a lot of people did come to class with puff balls. You know, natural hair. Oh, and they stuff say like that. some people pull it off and some people can't. That's what they say, but everybody can pull it off. It don't matter the type of grade of hair you do have, because I have friends, my friend, best friend named Tierra, she has 
four C hair. They think they, they kinky care. hair, and she wears it natural all the time. She's beautiful. She she's pretty, dark skin, pretty, and everything. I do her hair. She get her hair done by me sometimes, but majority of the times in two strand twist, just pulled up. She a teacher too, so she even go the. The uh, students love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow! So teach elementary, so I mean, well, it just it's just the people. How can people get a hold of you if they wanted to reach out to you? Get a hold of me? Yeah, Instagram. Um, what's your you, handle? Actually, you can catch me on Instagram at Hair by Lex three two one. Also, my work phone number is six seven eight nine two three one four six six. Do I need to repeat Hit that? Alexis on the low because Alexis is about to <laughs> blow. blow. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That's that Mike Jones when you get a number out like that. That's the Mike Jones effect. <laughs> so, yeah. He's the only one I know just blew up giving that number out like that. 800. Oh, look, look, everybody <laughs> know the number. <laughs> Shoot, nah. you should be on commercial and like, put your I, number in there I just know, like right? that. I hope you did, we did you justice, man. Thank you for coming on Boss Talk 101. We love how you. you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I thank we y'all for inviting me. You said we nerve, the nerves went the away. The nerves went away. We love you. I'm a real character. Check it, man. <laughs> it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.